Welcome to Loving Truth. We're looking at 1 Peter chapter 1. We've worked our way down to verse 13, which says, Therefore, with minds that are alert and fully sober, set your hope on the grace to be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed at his coming. It's interesting that this phrase, with minds that are alert in the uh, King James translation, it talks about girding up the loins of your mind. It actually is a Hebrew idiom uh, when someone would want to run, thinking of uh, perhaps a, a male who wears a bit of a longer coat, a uh, robe. If he wants to run, he'll pull up that robe and actually tuck it into his belt. And that was the uh, concept of being ready for action, gird up the loins, uh, pull up the robe and tuck it in and be ready to run. And here it's talking about, we need to do that very thing with our minds. We need to get into the mindset that we're ready for action and we're ready for what is going to be coming uh, to us and we're ready to make sure that our focus is on Christ. In other words, to be clear-minded. Uh, it talks about having your minds alert and fully sober. So it's the mind here that's supposed to be sober. It's not talking about being drunk with uh, alcohol. It's talking about the mind being clear and uh, not fuzzy or distracted. And so here's a mindset. Here's the mindset that believers in the midst of hard times need to have. We are to set our hope on grace. Don't set your hope on your achievement. Set your hope on grace. Grace is God giving to us what we don't deserve, and that's the only way we can receive salvation. We cannot earn it. There's no way that we can do enough to attain eternal life. We've already sinned so much that one sin actually brings us to eternal punishment separates us from God because God is holy. We have to be perfect if we wanted to gain entrance into heaven on our own merit, and no one can. So set your hope on the grace of God. That's the mindset. And notice it tells us that Christ is coming. Uh, when Christ comes back, our hope is set on the grace that will be given to us. The coming of Christ has uh, two aspects to it. One is of judgment, and then one is of reward. So there will be retribution to those who have rejected him and fought against him, denied him, ignored him. But there will be reward to those who have put their faith and trust in him. So when Christ comes again, those who believe in him are looking forward to his coming. They're longing for his appearing. And that's where grace comes from. It's from the person of Christ. And indeed, he's coming again. Now, verse 14 says, As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. It's a very interesting phrase there. Another Hebrew idiom, this idea of obedient children, pictures obedience as our parents and uh, the mother obey and the father follow, give birth to children who are obedient. We are to be living obedient lives, not conformed to this world. That's the way we used to live before we came to know Christ. But verse 15 says, just as the one who calls you is holy, so you should be holy in everything you do. For it is written, and now he quotes from the book of Leviticus chapter 11, be holy because I am holy, God said. So we are to set our hope on grace, the grace that will be given to us when Christ comes again, and we are to, to, we are to strive to live a holy life because God is holy. This sounds a whole lot like Hebrew, uh, Romans chapter 12. Therefore, I urge you, brethren, brothers and sisters, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service of worship. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you can prove 
or approve the perfect will of God in your life, what is good and pleasing to him. Because God is holy, we should be holy. Not conformed, as Peter says, to this uh, evil world that is uh, run by those who are anti-God, but be conformed to the one who is holy, transformed. We have a new model, we have a new father, and we need to be just like him. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, help us to focus our daily lives on grace and on holiness. Grace that you give to us freely and the holiness that you display. I pray, Father, that this day we would strive to be more like Jesus. In your name we pray, amen.